Hello and welcome back to another video and today it is another episode of non-league news hashtag 616 now so yeah all the big stories from around non-league football leave a like on the video we always try and smash 40 likes on this series we managed to do it every video so far so please smash the like subscribe if you do hit that little bell so you don't miss a video and yeah let's get straight into that non-league news so the first story for once this week, it's not from Billericay or Glen Tamplin. We start off with a South West club, Torquay United. And they've been very busy. Uh, they sacked Gary Hours, their current manager. Um, it did look like the writing was on the wall, uh, as in the late August, a fan threw coffee at Mr Hours, which was uh, obviously pretty, pretty bad. You don't want that happening. And that fan has now got ejected. Um, but Gary Hours probably deserved to be sacked. He took a squad that had potential in the National League down to the National League South. He was given a chance. Um, but a month into the season, it's not been working. They're, I think they're 14th in the league. And in their statement, they talked about they want to win this league straight away. Uh, and the fact that they haven't been doing too great at home. And the teams they're losing to, um, and they're in one of the lowest points in their history. A change was needed, so Gary Hours was sacked. And then, as soon as, like a day or a day or two after, Torquay had got a great appointment in Gary Johnson, um, a fantastic appointment there from Torquay. Um, former Bristol City, um, Kettering, Cambridge, Yeovil, um, and he's got a very good experience. Um, and they'll be hoping that they can, with Gary Johnson, he can push him up the leagues. They managed to get their first win of the season against, against I think it was... Um, Hemel Hempstead, uh, a 2-0 win, uh, away win as well, so a really good point for victory there. Um, Gary Johnson was sacked from Cheltenham, who were a football league club. He was there for three years. He managed to, unfortunately, take them down to the National League, um, but then get them promoted at the first of asking, winning the league, which is no mean feat. That is a very tough division. To win that, especially when you come straight back down, is an amazing achievement. Um, and he's done fantastically well to do that. So I think, you know, that's a fantastic appointment. You know, there's stuff back around the scenes um, for Torquay. So it may not be... Fa it, it's a great appointment for Torquay. And it, Torquay fans will be hoping that they can push up the National League South and, you know, go for that promotion. And Gary Johnson seems to be the man that is likely to be able to do that. And so this week there's been a lot of news of grounding. It's been a bit of a managerial merry-go-round. And we're only in mid-September. But Maidstone have got a new manager in Harry Wheeler. A fantastic coach, of course, was a massive shock for him to get sacked from Billericay. Um, and we'll be talking about them somehow. Uh, every week there seems to be a new story associated with the Billericay town. It's a really weird situation. But Harry Wheeler, uh, he's gone to Maidstone, who are really struggling. Uh, they're bottom of the league. They haven't won or got, they haven't got any points in their last five games. So they are struggling a little bit. Harry Wheeler is a fantastic coach, one of the youngest people to ever get a UEFA Pro license, which is a fantastic achievement. He's managed uh, Billericay, St Albans, um, and he's managed a lot of clubs as well, so lower down. Um, this is probably his maybe his biggest chance in the National League, so he'll be hoping he can do well. Um, but if Maidstone do go down, they, they have got a young manager there who is hungry to maybe take them back up again. So um, it's a good appointment. And I think, you know, they were linking with A.D. Pennock and um, some of those sort of managers. But they've got Harry Wheeler in now, I think is a good appointment. Um, I don't know if he'll be able to rejuvenate that squad to be able to get them um, back up and back playing some good football. But, you know, one point and you're back on track. So, yeah, good appointment from Maidstone to bring in Harry Wheeler. Um, yeah, good job, Stone. So, no managerial news this time, but... Um, you may have seen from the thumbnail, you're thinking, why is Tim Howard got a Dagenham Redwood shirt? Has he signed for Daggers? Is he now the manager or something? No, Tim Howard is part of an American consortium which have bought uh, Dagenham Redbridge. Um, maybe he could, you know, do a little uh, play in a few charity matches, but I don't think he'll be playing uh, full time. It's a fantastic investment, and the club have said for a club of their size, fantastic investment, and considering where they were. Uh, in January, February, and the fact they were losing so many players, like Corey Whiteley went to Ebbsfleet, um, and all these players, you know, seemingly uh, losing them, um, be in a much better situation now. Uh, they're absolutely great to see, and to have Tim Howard involved, it's a nice little story as well. 
Um, but for Daggers fans, it's going to give them a much better chance. They managed to re without maybe the owners were starting to get a bit of a before it was agreed, uh, and they started to turn a bit of form around. They're starting to look pretty decent. They got a good point against Chesterfield. Um, Peter Taylor seems to be getting it right now, uh, and they did say that Peter Taylor's future uh, will be safe or he'll be staying there. Um, so I think Dagenham and Redbridge, you know, can push up those leagues, uh, no, push up the league a little bit because they've got a new owner in. Uh, and maybe Tim Howard could bring in a few American players to Dagenham and Redbridge. We'll see. But it's a lot more positive, a lot more positive for the Daggers. So we've got another second, and this time it is from Hereford. Hereford, of course, have uh, been going on this marching run of three title wins in a row. Fantastic um, from them. They're absolutely smashing it. Um, but their manager, who's been t who's won those three titles, has now got sacked. A poor start to the season, um, and they haven't. They're bottom of the uh, form table at the moment. Not been a great form, um, but the reason is, and I see a lot of every time I seem to see sackings and stuff, and um, from clubs is this ambition to get to the EFL, uh, long term ambition and stuff like that. Um, again, I I still don't really believe in the sort of long term. EFL because it's so tough to do it and but yeah I think maybe they're going to get a more experienced manager in they did lose on Saturday um, so they're going to need a manager in and need to sort it out fast it's disappointing that he wasn't given the time considering to get three um, t titles in a row it's really really harsh Sutton's European tour is well and truly underway they are going to Ireland they're going to Ireland Sutton are Sutton are going to Ireland they're going to Dublin, they're going to play in the Iron Brew Cup, and they're going to do fantastically well. They're playing against they're playing against Bohemian, um, and you know Sutton will be. Oh, I'm going to stop doing the accent now. But Sutton are going to Ireland. They're going to uh, Bohemian. Yeah, this is absolutely crazy. A non-league club can't drive to a game. They're going to have to get planes and stuff. It's mental. I hopefully. Uh, that's going to be an absolute mental day out, any or not day out, like a weekend or whatever, going to Dublin and to watch your non-league side or your local side. Uh, hopefully, uh, some winning. Can yeah, they won, of course, in Scotland with a 1-0 win, and they brought 101 fans. Maybe they can bring a few more into the 3000 Steeter Stadium at Bohemian, uh, who have finished, I think, fifth in the Irish League. So it's going to be a tough game, but we've seen how the Scottish League and the fifth tier have compared and I think we did quite well, um, or the non-league did, um, but how is Irish League and the fifth tier going to compare? Last story, of course, we wouldn't be non-league news without Billericay Town, and I didn't want to put them at the front because they're always getting big attention. I want to, like, it's got to be talked about, but it's another mental story. Glenn Tamplin um, looked as if he was appointing Steve Watt or putting him in some temporary charge, um, he put them into their WhatsApp group chat, introduced them to the players and stuff. Um, and then two hours later, um, Steve Watt, who was originally a temporary manager doing some stuff for Maidstone, and of course Harry Wheeler came in, uh, then got removed from that group chat and said he was sacked from a job that he didn't even have. And the players were like, what's going on, Glenn? What is it? Have we got another manager sacked or something? Um, and it turns out he got rid of him because uh, Steve Watt said some things about Billericay in the past or slag them off a little bit and it's just absolutely crazy it is an absolute circus yeah that's all the big stories from non-league football this week let's go on to the tables the form tables there was a uh, game of the game weeks and shock of the game weeks let's go so game of the game week in the national league i could have given this to uh wrexham Ebbsfleet, but i just think i'm talking about that enough um, and I don't want to talk about that match anymore. Maidenhead have an easy victory over Halifax. Three goals inside 36 minutes. And Josh Kelly is looking. Um, a few Maidenhead fans calling him the next. Dave Tarpey, of course, scored so many goals in the National League South. Is lock locking, looking pretty well for Josh Kelly. He's scored a lot of goals. Uh, and Maidenhead seem to have overturned their poor start to the season. Um, shock of the National League is definitely Gateshead nil, Braintree 1. Great first victory for Braintree all the way up to Gateshead. And what a victory that is. And it does make our loss to them for Ebsfit against them at home much not as great, is it? Um, we then look at game of the game week in the National League North. We've got Bradford 2, Altrincham 3. Uh, one goal and then Bradford turn it back. 
and then Altrincham. They seem to be scoring a lot of goals, managed to get back to 3 2. So, really exciting game there at Bradford. Um, and then, shock of the, um, the game week in the National League um, North is York City 0, Kidderminster 3. Absolutely poor performance from York. Losing at home 3 0 to Kidderminster. Kidderminster, to be fair, doing well, but to lose 3 0 when you're going for a title or playoffs. York have still haven't announced who their new manager is. Uh, I think it's still the youth coach guy. Um, but a 3 0 loss to Kidderminster is not going to help him cause to get that job permanently. Then look at the game of the game week in the National League South. It's Eastbourne 2, Slough 4. Again, three goals inside half an hour uh, and already four in the first half. Um, and then uh, Slough also had a red card inside 10 minutes, but still managed to beat Eastbourne 4 2, who were flying high. Um, but Flying high at the start, but starting to maybe retract a little bit. Um, but Slough, what a fantastic win to win, score four goals when you got a red card in ten, inside 10 minutes. And then shock of the game week in the National League South is Woking 1, Dulwich Hamlet 2. Um, Dulwich Hamlet haven't been doing too great. I thought they'd have probably started better, but maybe they're just adapting um, to National League South level. But a fantastic away win against league leaders, uh, Woking at their ground, Kingfield, I think. Um, but they did concede an early goal. But what a fantastic victory for Dulwich that is. If we then look at the tables at the National League, flying high is Harrogate. They're doing fantastically well. Four wins in a row. They're absolutely smashing it. And of course, got Wrexham, um, who are smashing it as well. Salford are starting to got a little bit more, starting to look a little bit more dangerous. So, um, our and the early starters that have done really well, like Halifax and Gateshead and Solihull, are maybe starting to slip a little bit. Um, Sutton have had a bit of a stuttery start, but they're starting to sort themselves out a little bit. Um, players, uh, teams you expect to be a bit higher, um, but Boreham Wood aren't doing that great at the moment. Same with uh, Barrow, uh, with their great attacking style, haven't managed to get a win in their last five. Um, Ebbsfleet as well. We've only we've had three losses in our last four. Chesterfield continue their winless run. Um, Dover doing really poorly. Only one win from their first eleven games. Um, to put them rock bottom of the National League. Look at the form table. Uh, top of the form table is Harrogate and Leighton. They're absolutely smashing. Look at the bottom. Maidstone with five losses in a row. If Ebbsfleet didn't have that win against Eastleigh though, we'd have, he won point and be second to bottom. So. The fleet are in pretty bad situation right now. Uh, look at the top of the National League North. Of course, we've got our boys Chorley. They're absolutely smashing it. Uh, we went to Chorley service station twice. So, yeah, got a bit of a connection to Chorley. Uh, they're absolutely smashing it. They're still unbeaten. I think one of the only teams that is um, still unbeaten. Same with Kidderminster up there, still unbeaten, but had a few more draws. Then look lower down. Nuneaton are struggling. They've only managed to get one win. Uh, and FC United and Manchester um, still struggling um, since their dodgy start and losing the manager and stuff. So look at the form table. Hereford, of course, they sat the manager. And you can tell by that form table they are struggling a little bit. And of course, we've got Chorley and Kidderminster at the top there as well. If you look at the top of the National League South. We still have Moking, um, but only one point from their last two will be a little bit worrying for them. Bielorecki still up there. Also, the surprise of Hampton and Richmond considering... Um, they're um, losing their manager and losing a lot of their squad to Woking. Uh, managed to get five wins in a row and of course will be top of that um, form table. Look lower down, Dartford will be hoping to improve. Only one win from their last five games. Um, and Torquay with their new manager Gary Johnson will be hoping to push up that table currently in 12th. Uh, early Flyers Concord are starting to slip a little bit. No, um, only two points from the last five. Western Supermare still without a win. Only two points from their first 11 games. Look at that form table. Of course, got Western Supermare and Concord who are really struggling. And Truro are still struggling, uh, even with their new manager in the club. So, yeah, that is non-league news. Really appreciate it. If you could, leave a like. Let's try and smash 40 likes on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that little bell as well so you never miss any video. Comment all your thoughts on everything I mentioned. And I'll see you all later.